Hello there. This is the family doctor. store proprietor and another daughter of a local justice of the peace are vying with each other for the attentions of a young soda clerk in a local drug store. Hmm. <laughs> Amos Day, the old scallywag. A fine editor he is. He knows very well that everybody in Cedarton will know that he's talking about Ella Mary Bliss and Faith Windsor and Chick Harper. <laughs> what did you hey. say, Grant? Uh-huh. Oh, nothing, honey. Just reading the post bugle. Something I'd like you to read, Grant. Oh, yes, what? It's this letter from Grant Jr.'s wife. Listen, Lou, you've known Nell for seven years. Why do you always refer to her as Grant Jr.'s wife? Oh, I don't know. I just suppose it's because I'm Grant Jr.'s mother. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's it. Well, let me see the letter. On second thought, I think I'll read it to you. You always have so much trouble trying to make out a writing. All right, honey, go ahead. Dear Mother Adam, we received the pickled watermelon and the blackberry preserves in fine shape. They arrived yesterday morning, and I put them right up on the shelves, waiting for the right occasion to open them. Grant has been very busy lately. He signed another contract for another building, he says, and it's taking quite a lot of his time to get all the figuring done. Did Grant tell you in his last letter that we have a new car? It's quite a... quite snazzy, and we like it lots. Thanks so much for the pickles and the preserves. And I, as I know Grant is too, am looking forward to seeing both of you. You, uh, swell people soon. Love from us both, Nell and Grant Jr. Grant, what are you thinking? The same thing you are, honey. It just makes me weep when I think of those two children up there in that big city. Oh, now, they're not children, Lou. Grant is 26 and Nell is 23. They're not children. Yes, they are. There are children, Grant. And they're in trouble. Trouble? Oh, now. Yes, they are. That letter from Nell wasn't the letter of a happy young wife of a successful young architect, like we know Grant Jr. is. Well, uh... And you know it wasn't. What did she mean? She put the pickles and preserves up on the shelves, waiting for the right occasion to open them. And she keeps saying that Grant says he has to do this and that. Something's worrying, Nell, and I'd like to know what it is. All right, then. We'll find out. Oh, how? We'll invite him down here for a week. Oh, Grant. I hoped so much you'd say something like that. What are we going to do? I just got through telling you what we're going to do. We're going to invite him down here for a week. And you let me write the letter. I'll guarantee they'll come down. Aren't you sort of nervous, Grant? Uh, nervous? Why, why, why should I be nervous? Greeting my own son and his wife. Yes, but <laughs> we haven't seen them for so long. It's more than a year. Well, never, never you mind. I'm, I'm not nervous. Then but... then what are you tearing up tonight's copy of the Post Bugle for? Why, who, me? Oh, well, well, I don't know. I didn't seem to be anything important in it. Just thought I'd got... There they, they are. are. <laughs> well, maybe you better go to the door and let them in, Grant, while I get this apron off. Mm-hmm. I'll just bet you left that apron on on purpose. Oh, all right, all right, I'll go let him in. Take them into the parlor, and I'll put the kettle on for tea. 
<laughs> All right, Lou. <clears throat> Hello, Hello, Daddy. Hello, Daddy Adams. Oh, my, it's good to see you again. Well, Grant and Nell, come on in. Hey, Mother and I have been expecting you for hours. <laughs> oh, not for hours, Dad. You know how long it takes to come down from the city on that old milk train. Well, <laughs> come on in anyway. My, it's good to see you both. Oh. Uh, uh, Junior, take Nell's things. Right. You oh, know right. where to put them. And your mother's out in the kitchen, it's meddling good. with a kettle or something. Yeah, I'll take care of Nell while you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dad. I'll go in and yell a hello at Mother. Uh, well, well, well. Ma, it's good to see you two youngsters again, Nell. Is it? Oh, it's awfully swell seeing you again, too, Daddy Adams. Come on, come on here. Sit down. Mother will be in pretty soon. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, well, how are things going with you both? Oh, just fine. Grant's doing so well, and I'm so proud of him. You know, he won the National Prize for the best design for a college football stadium this year. Yes, yes, I remember. You wrote Mrs. Adams something about uh-huh. it. What did it say? Did it mean much for Grant? Oh, I should say. Why, it was the very thing he'd been hoping for all year, winning one of the National Architectural Prizes. Of course, he decided he'd design a stadium because he used to play football at state, and, and Grant says it was a new idea he had on draining a football field that won the prize for him. Well, that's certainly <laughs> fine. Oh, here they come. Ah, mother! Son. Bearing tea and biscuits. They are not biscuits, Junior. They are hermits. Hello, oh, Mother Adams. Hermits. Oh, I'm awfully glad to see you. Good again. evening, Nell. I'm very glad that you and Junior could come down to visit us. Thank you. And now, sit down, all of you. This tea won't stay hot forever. And hermits. Gee, Mother, I haven't seen anything like this since a year ago last Christmas. Yes. Your father and I were terribly sorry you two couldn't get down last Christmas. Do you take lemon? And oh. just one lump of sugar, as you used to, yes, Nell. That's right, Mother. And you take cream, one don't you? Yes, How about Mother. You? Well, here we are. Well, I hope Nell's ready to leave. We haven't much time before train time. Oh, you've got half an hour. And the Cedarton isn't so big that we can't get you down to the depot in a shorter time than that. <laughs> You're right, Dad. I guess I've forgotten a lot about the old town. Mm. What do you mean? Huh? Oh, come on now. I know when you say, mmm, like that, you've got something on your mind. Oh, go on. I haven't anything of the sort. <laughs> get on in the house with you. You're as bad as your mother. Always <laughs> thinking I've got something on my mind. We're in the parlor. Come on in here. We're having a cup of tea before the children leave. All right, Mother. Be right in. Come on, son. Coming, Dad. Now. Sit down, you two, and I'll pour your tea. Yes, oh, you're going to leave us again now. Going back to the big city. Yes, and how I hate it. No, you do? Why? Oh, this peace, this blissful quiet here in this lovely little town. I'd give up everything we have just to be able to live the rest of my days in a town like this. Well, <clears throat> you know, I've always believed that surroundings don't make a whole lot of difference. I don't think happiness depends on where you live or what kind of carpets you have on the floor or what sort of traffic you have in the streets. And it's much deeper than that. I think two youngsters like you should be able to find happiness anywhere. Oh, Dad. Nell didn't mean that yes, she Yes, I wasn't... did. We might just as well be frank about it, Grant. You and I have almost everything material that a young couple could wish for. A lovely home, a nice car, and hosts of friends. But, but there's something missing, something very real, something... Well, intangible. I don't know what it is. But the absence of it is pulling us apart, Grant, and, and you know it as well as I do. Nell, why, this I'm is... I'm sorry, Mother Adams. I shouldn't have talked like that in front of you and Daddy Adams. Nonsense. Of course you should. Gosh, it's a Friday. If a son and daughter can't open up and blow off to their own mother and father, who could they... Say, listen, you two kids, you, you haven't been scrapping, have you? Dad, of course not. Yes, we have, and you know that too, Grant. We might just as well admit it. We've been having little disagreements lately or over nothing. They've been getting more frequent all the time, and I, I just can't stand it. Say, you know, your mother and I went through a time like this once. Yep, just like you two youngsters are experiencing now. Grant. Oh, I know you don't want me to talk about it, Lou. But if Grant Jr. and Nell can be helped by the telling of it, by gosh, I'm going to tell it. Oh, I see. Go on, Daddy Adams. What were you saying? Well... I was saying that when that little lady over there and I were first married, we used to fight like cats and dogs. You did? Yeah. Yep. It started off with just a little bigger now and then before I'd leave in the morning for the hospital. 
We were married while I was still an intern, you know, and your mother was a nurse. She had to resign because they couldn't have a married couple working in the same hospital. And they, they didn't find it out for a couple of months, though. <laughs> well, then it got worse and worse. First, just little unimportant spats. Men, well, it got so as I, I just couldn't bear to go home night. Always dreaded facing another session of scrapping. Oh, we never actually did bodily harm to each other, but we came mighty close to it now and then. Gee, I, I can't believe it. It's true. Yep, not for a few months there that we'd made a mistake. Your mother was almost ready to give up and go back to the hospital. And I was almost ready to leave town and go somewhere else to start in practice. Grant, don't you think that... That I've you... told enough? Well, maybe I have, honey, maybe I have. But anyway, there it was. We were drifting farther and farther apart all the time. Until something came along that changed everything. What was that, Dad? You. Huh? Yep, that's right. Nell, when Grant Jr. was born, we were so busy taking care of the little shaver that we didn't have time to worry about our own imagined troubles. <laughs> Say, when I got through walking the floor with your son... I didn't have enough gumption in the morning to do anything but smile, wiggly, and sort of acquiesce to anything your mother wanted. <laughs> Isn't that true, honey? <laughs> y- yes, it certainly is. Well, I don't think we've had a disagreeable word since. And that was 26 years ago. Oh, thank you, Daddy Adams. Hmm? We both thank you, Dad. For what? Oh, say, look at the time. Oh, we've only got 20 minutes to get started and get down to the depot. Come on, darling. We'll go upstairs and get our bags and wraps. Yes, dear. I'm ready to go. Grant Adam Sr., you big storyteller. Huh? Who, me? Yes, you. You know very well you made that big story up out of whole cloth. Not one word of it was true. Oh, is that so? Well, well, what do you know about that? You know very well we've never had a harsh word between us in all the years we've been married. To say nothing of a fight. Well, there was that time when you put too much sugar in my coffee and I had to speak to you about it. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry I disgraced you so, Lou. Yes, you did disgrace me, Grant Adams. Right before my own children. But I love you for it. Come on, honey. Time to get our things on, too. We can't let the youngsters miss their train. They'll have a lot to talk over on the way back to the city. This is the family doctor. I'll be in to see you again right soon. Goodbye. (laughs) 